Hello guys and this is Scott here and today we're going to do another historic video today and this time it's of the Aprils of 2007 and 2011. Now these were two very warm, very dry and very anti-cyclonic Aprils that are really quite interesting because they fell within four years of each other. Now just before I get started I just want to say that a lot of the information and statistics you hear in this video come from Trevor Harley's personal weather website. It's a great resource, it has detailed information of all weather months going back to the 1900s and then bits of information going back before that. It's a brilliant resource and I'll leave the link to that in the description. And also the weather charts in this video come from wettercentral.d. They have an archive of charts going back to January 1871, can you believe? So pretty much, if ever you want to request any videos that I do for these, it can be of any weather event or season since 1871 really, and I can have a look at it. So, we're going to start in April 2007. Now April 2007 was an exceptionally warm month with a CET of 11.2 degrees which is very warm for April and obviously at the, ta and at the time this was set it was the warmest April on record. So we start off on the 1st of April and we have high pressure pretty much through the country and then that really just stays there as we go through the 2nd and into the 3rd. Notice by the 3rd though it moves up a bit towards Iceland so this first part of April 2007 was a bit on the cool side however the 4th and into the 5th it ridges back through us and then in the 5th you can see we've got a very very deep blow to the north and at, the, at this point it actually looks like it's going to threaten to bring a very cold arctic plunge and don't forget it's still early April so snow can still happen at this point. However, as we go into the 6th, the high actually holds it off. So the winds do go into the north a little bit, but it stays relatively dry, but under the calm winds it's still pretty warm. Temperatures are up into the mid-teens, which is very respectable for early April. As we go into the 7th, the high pressure starts to build back through us, so it settles down further and that allows the temperatures to rise. And that stays as we go into the 8th, we bring a bit of a trough into the north of Scotland, so we get a bit of rain up there, but it's never really that much, as really April 2007 actually is one of the driest Aprils on record actually, England and Wales only record 18% of their average um, and parts of the southeast it's like one or two millimeters throughout the entire month and even more remarkably places like Canterbury and Thorny Island actually record no measurable rainfall during this month it's an exceptionally dry month and again it's just the reason because here on the 8th we've got this high pressure straight through us and that stays there going into the 9th and into the 10th <clears throat> and around the 10th fish and into the 11th we do get a tiny bit of a cooler interlude as we bring some westerlies into the north but again it stays very warm for the time of the year with temperatures still into the mid teens and then through the 12th again the high pressure just comes back and it moves to the east of us now so this actually allows some very warm air now to drift off the continent so as we go through the 13th and into the 14th we're just dragging that warm air in and as you can see the orange colours on the chart get deeper which indicates that the air is warming up, warming up as the thickness in the air at 800, sorry, 500 HPA is getting thicker which indicates the air's warming up then on the 15th we continue to drag these warm air this warm air in off the continent and we actually record our 
highest temperature of April 2007 and it's 26.5 degrees are just short of 80 Fahrenheit in East Sussex. Now, even more remarkably, that temperature goes unbeaten until August because I'm sure, as many of you know, summer 2007 was exceptionally cool and exceptionally wet. But, we're not going to go into summer 2007 on this one. I might leave that for another video. As we go into the 60th, that high starts to drift away to the east. But, we bring another high pressure in from the west. So it does cool slightly, but it still stays very warm for the time of the year. And again, the 17th, we keep high pressure into the 18th. And then on the 19th, you can see we try, this low pressure tries to bring another cold plunge into the north. In fact, in Scotland, it's, it does it a bit. As you can see, the, the northerly winds are very close to the north of Scotland. So this day is, is a bit cooler for northern Scotland, but throughout most of England and Wales, it's still very warm, very dry and very sunny. It's a very sunny April this as well, it's the second sunniest April on record and you'd have to go back to 1893 to find a sunnier April. Then on the 20th, again this high pressure just comes back in, it shoves that cold northerly into the continent. So that high just protects us and keeps us warm and very dry. Then on the 21st we bring another trough, we attempt to bring another trough in. So this brings a bit of drizzly rain to northwestern areas, but again, it doesn't add up to very much at all. And on the 22nd again, it just tries to come in, we develop a bit of a southwesterly there, so we bring a bit of moisture up. But again, it's just very light drizzle, the very few places that actually do see precipitation. And that continues into the 23rd and into the 24th. Then on the 25th, we try to bring another low in. And this is where really the most significant precipitation comes in April 2007. Again, it's, again, it's barely anything. Because, again, many places across the country record less than 10 millimetres of rain in the entire month. So it just brings light rain in. Then on the 26th, the high pressure just comes back and it builds in properly onto the 27th. So we come back to high pressure that we've had all through the month into the 28th. But now, notice how the high pressure is starting to move to the north of the country. It's gradually inching northwards into the 29th. Now what this is doing, this is what sets us up for the exceptionally wet summer. So as we go into the 30th, you can see it's inched a bit further north again, and it's now between Norway and Iceland. Now, if you like warmth in summer, that is never a good sign to see blocking to the north of the UK and around Iceland and Greenland. Because essentially what it does, it forces the jet stream on a much more southerly course. So all those Atlantic lows are getting ready to attack us and they do in early May. And that is the pattern that dominated through summer 2007. But, again, as I said, I'm not going to look at summer 2007 in this one. Again, I might do that for, we might leave that for another one. But, as we go back to April, it's just been a very dry month now. There's quite a bit of concern about the lack of water. But, summer 2007 resolves that. Now, fast forward four years to April 2011. Now, this astoundingly was even warmer than April 2007. It wasn't just slightly warmer, it was a good 0.6 of a degree warmer. It has a CET, a Central England temperature of 11.8 degrees, which makes it by far the warmest April on record. I thought we'd never better April 2007. But we did it, unbelievably, in 2011. It's one of the most, it's 
probably it's definitely my favourite April, despite main experience. It is my favourite April and probably my perfect year will be made out of this April. But there we are on the 1st and it doesn't look like it's going to be a very warm sunny month at first. On the 1st of April we're bringing up south westerlies. Now these are bringing moisture in so we get a bit of rain on the 1st of April. Now because of these setups April 2011 is slightly wetter than April 2007. Now by, by wetter I don't mean a washout at all it was again an exceptionally dry month but nonetheless it is slightly wetter than April 2007. It's also slightly less sunnier. It's still, it's still an extremely sunny month, but it's slightly less sunnier than 2007. And again, that's because of the southwesterlies we see in the beginning of the month. So there, are we, so there we are on the first. We have Atlant, we have the Icelandic low out into the northwest of the country, and the Azores high creating a ridge around Spain and France. And that's dragging up this mild southwesterly wind. Now as we go through into the second, again we're getting a bit more of an unsettled push here. We try to bring weather fronts in, but again they don't really bring that much. And that carries on into the 3rd of April. But then by the 4th of April you can see that the Azores High is already trying to nose inwards. It's ridging up from the southwest and it's already bringing warmer, drier and settled weather to the south. And it very quickly warms up because through there into the 5th and into the 6th we bring a very warm southwesterly wind. As you can see if you follow those isobars back we're going right down to the Mediterranean and even the tropical Atlantic. So on this day, the 6th of April 2011 we record temperatures widely into the 20s, the low 20s, which is very good for early April. Then as we move into the 7th, the high pressure just takes over, so it stays very warm, low 20s in the south, high teens in the north. Not bad for April. And again, the 8th, the high pressure just builds through the country into the 9th and the 10th. At this point, I don't even think there was a cloud in the sky at this point. Then on the 12th, again, we try to bring a bit of a westerly in, but it doesn't really fail, because as we go from the 11th into the 12th and into the 13th, we keep that high pressure in control. On the 13th there, we try and bring another little trough in, and this really just affects northwest Scotland, in fact, for northwest Scotland, April 11 was actually slightly wetter than average, can you believe? But for the southeast, again, there was barely any recorded rainfall. And as you see, the 14th, that affects the northwest, and you can't really see it, but it's marked by that slight elongation in the isobars. But in the southeast, close to that high pressure, it's cloudless skies. Then on the 15th, the high pressure then sits to the east of the country. And actually what this does is it starts to bring a bit of the North Sea breeze onto eastern coastlines. And this brings the North Sea Ha into a lot of eastern England and eastern Scotland. And the Ha is basically, for those who don't know, sea fog. And this is another reason why April 11 isn't quite as sunny as April 2007 because a lot of the days started off with low cloud along these eastern coastlines. Where I'm from it was a completely sunny month. That carries on into the 16th and into the 17th. Again the high pressure is just there in over the country. And on the 18th again then it starts to move a bit more north eastwards. And what this does is this starts to allow more warm air to come off the continent. And we're getting to the point now in April 11 where we see the highest temperatures of the month. Because as we go through the 19th and into the 20th, again you can see those orange colours deepening and the warm air is being dragged off the continent. And that goes on into the 21st. And then on the 22nd, we've got that very warm southeasterly. 
and I record my highest temperature of April 2011 and this was of 23.5 degrees which up here in Manchester is not bad it's my all time high for April, it hasn't been beaten since um, and I don't expect it to be beaten for a while actually but then on the 23rd we bring the highest temperature in the country for April 2011 and it's 27.8 degrees Celsius at Wisley, Surrey which is very high and in fact it's the warmest April day since 1949 again just emphasising how exceptional April 11 was for warmth and in fact both of these Aprils I said in my December 10 video, December 2010 was exceptionally exceptional for cold but this April that followed it was just as exceptional as that month but for warmth instead as you can see there again on the 23rd we've just got those really warm southeasterly winds and into the 24th we try to bring a bit of a thundery low into the southeast and that does bring quite a few downpours which is again another reason why April 11 is slightly wetter than 2007 but throughout most of the country actually we're under what you call a call there which is sort of a no man's land in pressure but as we got through to the 25th again the high pressure winds out and it turns warmer and settled again and it builds through into the 26th and into the 27th and now again watch the high pressure it starts to retreat to the northwards it first goes up to the Scandinavia on the 28th and then it starts to park itself in the Norwegian Sea on the 29th and that again sets us up for summer 2011 as we go through to the 30th of April the last day is as we finish off April 11 we have that warm easterly wind but the high pressures to the north as I said never a good sign in summer for warmth because after this a summer 2011 wasn't necessarily a wet summer in fact it was quite a dry summer but it was the coolest and the dullest since 1993 and that was again because these low pressures are just diving to the south but even more remarkably we have the second what we have the warmest spring on record then the coolest summer since 93 but then in autumn 2011 we have the second warmest autumn on record and we have an exceptional heat wave in September and October and that again is another month I'm planning on having a look at in another one of these historic videos but I hope you enjoyed that look at the Aprils of 2007 and 2011 hope it brought back some memories for those who do remember these two months so again thanks for watching guys and if you have any suggestions please leave them below and I'll see you soon